Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To ask the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs if she will make a statement on the killing of church worshippers in Ondo State, Nigeria, yesterday and on wider issues of violence against religious groups in Nigeria. Minister. Mr Speaker, I am horrified by the attack that took place against a church in Ondo State, southwest Nigeria, yesterday. I have publicly expressed the UK Government's condemnation of this heinous act and stressed the importance of those responsible being brought to justice in accordance with the law. The High Commission in Nigeria has also expressed our condolences to the Governor of Ondo State and offered our support. I know that the House will join me in sending our condolences to the families and communities of those killed. Rising conflict and insecurity across Nigeria is having a devastating impact on affected communities. I have raised this issue with the Nigerian authorities on several occasions, including in conversations with Nigeria's Vice President and Foreign Minister during my visit in February. And during that visit, I also met religious governors, uh, sorry, regional governors, religious leaders and non-governmental organisations to discuss intercommunal violence and freedom of religion or belief. It's clear that religious identity can be a factor in incidents of violence in Nigeria and that Christian communities have been victims. But the root causes are often complex and frequently also relate to competition over resources, historical grievances and criminality. So the UK Government is committed to working with Nigeria to respond to insecurity. At our Security and Defence Dialogue with Nigeria in February, we committed to work together to respond to the conflict. We're supporting local and national peace building efforts in Nigeria, including through the Nigeria Governors Forum and National Peace Committee. We provide mentoring and capacity building to support Nigerian police force units to improve their anti kidnap capacity, and are supporting efforts to address the drivers and enablers of serious and organised crime in Nigeria. At our security and defence dialogue, we both reiterated our shared understanding and commitment to protecting human rights for all. We are committed to defending freedom of religion or belief for all and promoting respect between different religious and non-religious communities. I discussed forward with the Nigerian Foreign Minister just last month and we look forward to hosting an international conference on FORB in July. We will continue to encourage the Nigerian government to take urgent action to implement long-term solutions that address the root causes of such violence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for granting this question following the tragic news of the latest killings in Nigeria. A targeted attack, not on warring militia as part of armed conflict, nor even targeting farmers or villages over land. No, this was a brutal attack on a place of worship, Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Owo, and on worshippers gathering on Pentecost Sunday. A time of celebration turned into a time of carnage. And why? That is the really urgent question. The Governor of Ondo State, Governor Akaradolu, condemned the attack as vile and satanic. Reverend Augustine Ikwu, Secretary of the Catholic Church in Ondo, said, We turn to God to console the families of those whose lives were lost. And I'm sure the whole House will join in these words of condemnation and consolation for the victims and their families, and I do thank the Minister for her words in this connection. But as this urgent question implies, this latest atrocity is far from an isolated incident where religious minorities, particularly Christians, are being targeted. Bandits, predominantly militant Fulani herdsmen, have killed 3,000 people in 2022 alone. Most of these horrendous attacks have in recent times been in the Middle Belt region and have adversely affected the practice of Christianity in the region. My Honourable Friend for Stranford led an APP delegation to Nigeria last week alongside my Deputy Special Envoy David Burroughs. They heard evidence from Benu, Enunu, Plata, Southern Kaduna, Adamawa and Taraba states. People all saying the attackers of their communities are militant Fulani herdsmen whose targets, whose victims, are profiled based on their religious identity. I have a number of questions for the Minister. Whilst the causes of violence and conflict in Nigeria are conflict, complex, will she agree, following this latest attack, 
not in the Middle Belt nor in the North, but in the today relatively safe Southwest, that this is a FORB issue, as the attacks are mainly on largely Christian communities. Will the Minister agree to meet me and the APP delegation to hear how local faith actors and NGOs need more support to bring faith communities together? What can the government do to support the Nigerian constitution, constitutional guarantee of freedom of religion and from discrimination? How is the government's partnership with Nigerian security forces and legal services supporting the apprehension of perpetrators and preventing increasing acts of impunity across Nigeria? And finally, Mr Speaker, will the government support NGO calls for the establishment of special courts for speedy prosecution of perpetrators of violence in affected states to discourage impunity and will it support NGOs in providing better research and monitoring of such grievous religious and human rights violations? Order. Can, can I gently say, it's a very important issue, that's why I granted the UQ, but you can't double the amount of time that's available. We've got to stick to the rules of the House. Not my rules, but the MP's rules. Minister? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, can I first of all thank the Honourable Lady for asking this question and you, Mr Speaker, for granting it, and thank her also for all that she does uh, to speak for freedom of religion or belief across the world. Um, this was, as I've said, a heinous act. Uh, we have condemned it. It has been very widely condemned by both Christian leaders and also Muslim leaders. Uh, leaders in Nigeria of different faiths have been very vocal, in, including the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs uh, under the leadership of uh, President General and Sultan of Sokoto. I mention that because I think it's important to note that um, all religion lead, religious leaders from all sides are coming together to condemn uh, this attack. Um, as I said in my opening statement, uh, it is clear that religious identity can be a factor in, 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 in some of these violence issues. Um, the sad fact is that uh, Nigeria is a country that is becoming increasingly violent. It is violent and, and there is rising conflict and insecurity. Um, that includes terrorism in the northeast and separately into communal conflicts and criminal banditry in the northwest middle belt violence in the southeast and southwest but um, Ondo State as she says um, was an area that had not experienced tragedies such as this so our High Commissioner has um, spoken for example to the parish priest of the church that was attacked to express our support and solidarity we are encouraging religious leaders to be act against this attack and continue to target uh, and others that continue to target religious institutions. Uh, we're working really closely um, with religious leaders, but also liaising with the authorities in Ondo State um, to encourage a thorough investigation. So her thoughts about investigation, we're di talking directly to the state about how best to help them and to support those um, coming together. So we are working with local faith actors and have done so since Sunday's um, attack. Um, the, the one thing that I, I would point out um, is that the, the really sad fact is that we're also seeing targeting actions against Muslim communities as well as Christian communities. So, for example, um, in April, in Tabara State, gunmen attacked a mosque. Um, so it is important to, to work with all sides um, when we are tackling this and that is why the UK will continue to also work with the government of Nigeria on uh, medium term and long term programmes to help address the causes of the instability um, as well as working with the police for example on improving uh, the work that they do. Thank you. Shadow Minister Bambos Cherilambos. Uh, thank you Madam Deputy Speaker and I want to begin by thanking the Speaker for granting this urgent question. Uh, my honourable friend the member for West Ham who would have been taking this UQ is unable to be with us today because she has Covid. We wish her a speedy recovery. Uh, the massacre in Owa yesterday was utterly horrific. 
To target a church where so many were gathered to peacefully pray and celebrate Pentecost is truly appalling. Reports suggest that at least 50 people have been killed, including children. The shock and sorrow, the anger and despair felt by the families and the communities broken by this atrocity will be shared on both sides of the house. And our solidarity extends further to the many across Nigeria in shared mourning for the lives lost. To millions of Catholics around the world and so many in British Nigerian communities who feel this is a personal blow. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident. Religious and ethnic bloodshed, kidnappings, and banditry, vigilantism and revenge attacks are all on the increase in Nigeria and each attack deepens the condition for further violence. Insecurity has been increasing rapidly across much of West Africa and we haven't seen an equally urgent response from the government. As the desert expands with climate heating, traditional livelihoods are destroyed, governments are weakened, mistrust grows along economic, ethnic and religious lines, and criminals and terrorists fill the void. Surely we must recognise that insecurity even poses a threat to the stability of Nigeria as a democracy, and supporting such an important regional and global partner must be a top priority. So how will the government adapt and build upon the UK-Nigeria Security and Defence Partnership to focus on the drivers of insecurity